A significant walk back from the Prime Minister today, actually just an hour ago, bringing in concessions to the federal government's carbon tax policy, including doubling the rebate for rural Canadians, pausing the tax entirely on home heating oil for three years, and incentives for new heating pumps. What forced the government to blink on its marquee climate policy? Our front bench is here to talk about that. Former BC Premier Christy Clark, she's a senior advisor with Bennett Jones, is with us, as is former Toronto Mayor John Tory and CTV News political analyst and former NDP leader, Tom Mulcair. Hi, everybody. Really nice Hi. to see you today. Hi. Christy, I'll, I'll start with you. I'm going to put that basic question directly to you. Why did the government blink? Uh, because their polling is, they're getting killed in the polling in Atlantic Canada. I was in the room, Bashi, when they negotiated with the provinces the very first pan-Canadian carbon tax. We've had one in BC for a long time. And, I, you know, I remember at the time walking out of there saying, there is nothing national about this. Every province was doing something differently. The Atlantic Canadians basically didn't have anything that they had to do at all. And we said to them, look, if you're going to do a carbon tax, do it the way we've done it. Make sure that every penny that you take away goes back into the economy in the form of tax reductions for small business and individuals so you're not growing government. They didn't do that. Made government fatter. And then second, don't tax home heating oil. We never did that in our province either, and we have the most comprehensive tax in the country. So these are guys that just didn't listen. They, I think, were a lot more interested in the presentation of it than the actual way it would work. They didn't think it through, and now they see their polls cratering. They're deciding to do something about it. So, John, I put that question to uh, Seamus O'Regan, the minister from Atlantic Canada who's on my program earlier. Is this just about a massive hit in the polls you've taken, particularly in Atlantic Canada, which is electorally significant to the Liberals. And he insisted, no, it's democracy at work. It's being there over the summer, listening to people and who are raising their concerns and, and amending policy based on those concerns in a pragmatic way. What do you think of that? Well, I guess that's a pretty good answer coming from him, you know, given where they are. And, I, I, you know, polls and democracy are not unconnected. But I think the real, uh, you know, challenge here is the fact that, um, you know, we had uh, probably more support for doing this in principle without people focusing on the practicalities of it on their pocketbooks uh, before we had an affordability crisis caused by other things, you know, whether it's interest rates or a whole host of things that have happened. And I think that all those things have changed and thus made people, you know, much less uh, likely to put up with uh, especially in Atlanta, Canada, which is it's no accident the announcement was made there where there was a bit of a revolution brewing. And you had circumstances that were really not defensible, where Nova Scotians, for example, were you know, not getting the same kind of rebate back that others were and this kind of thing. So I think that it, it is uh, you know, a political response. It is one that uh, takes account of the fact that climate change perhaps has gone down people's list a little bit, not completely. Um, and maybe this makes it uh, you know, more palatable uh, in the meantime. And uh, I, I think the other mistake they made, quite frankly, was one which other governments have used, or not the first, where one check, or I think maybe it's two, go, go, go into people's bank accounts, uh, you know, to give them the rebate. But every single day or week, they're going to the, uh, to the uh, gas station and filling up. They're paying their home heating oil all, uh, bill all the time. And that people just forget those checks. It's like the grocery checks earlier on this year. One grocery check, but you're going to the grocery store all the time and paying over and over and over again. And it just becomes becomes more and more of a burden and more unpopular. Yeah, they, I think they just they changed it, fair, you know, fairly recently to four times, ba based really on that feedback, right? That uh, people were seeing them only once a year, or actually as a, a credit, kind of in their in their when they filed their taxes, and and it wasn't kind of landing in the way that they had hoped. Tom, I'll just quickly uh, recap, sort of, for our viewers, the polling data that exemplifies how badly this landed in Atlantic Canada when the carbon price was imposed on July first. Uh, in June, according to Abacus data, the Liberals were polling at 36 percent, the Conservatives at 32. By September, the Conservatives were at 43, the Liberals were at 30. That's how pronounced the impact of this was, particularly in Atlantic Canada. Uh, Minister O'Regan insists that this won't undermine their overall objectives when it comes to climate policy. Do, do you, what, are your, what is your sense of that? Well, as a former environment minister, I know how tough these things can be, but you have to apply it consistently. I was listening to Christy before, and she has every right to boast that B.C. has had the most elaborate and well-structured carbon tax of any province for the longest time. And she gets to say that because B.C. put that in under her, her well, the government uh, of her political group. In Atlantic Canada, it was a double whammy. 
first of all, people still use a lot of heating oil as opposed to other places in Canada. It wasn't thought through. It was oversold because they were saying, well, you're going to get a reach, rebate check back and that'll cover everything. As the parliamentary budget officer correctly said, it's not true. It wasn't covering enough. And so it, it was an oversell and an underperformance, and it was a, a train wreck. And I'm not convinced that saying that you're going to have a three-year pause is the, is the ideal political solution, because people are just going to be looking at that at the next election, what, a year and a half from now? Who knows when it's actually going to be? And say, if these guys come back in, I'm getting that tax. Christy mentioned that she was in the room when they were discussing carbon taxes with the province. I was in the room in 2015 when a freshly minted Canadian prime minister named Justin Trudeau threw out his arms and said, Canada is back. We were in Paris for the signing of the famous Paris Accord on climate change. I'll tell you, Vashi, Canada has one of the worst records in the world since signing that accord. We have, we're have one of the two or three worst countries in the world for greenhouse gases per capita. Stephen Gilbo tries to talk a good game on this stuff. He masters the terminology, but he was at the cabinet table when they approved that massive offshore oil project called Bay Junau, just off Newfoundland and Labrador. That doesn't look like it's going to go through for economic reasons so far, but they approved it. That's the thing. So Mr. Trudeau and his environment minister love talking a good game with this stuff when they're talking to environmental groups and young people on campus. But very few people are, are convinced that they're actually getting it done because they're not. And in Atlantic Canada, they know how to look at these things and on a very practical level. Trudeau has one good idea in there. Give them a bit of time. Have systems where you can transfer your current, you know, oil-fired uh, hot air system to something that would work with electricity, which is a heat pump. That's good. That, that'll reduce greenhouse gases. And it's something that the government could help put in place. But it's... It's an example of the of inability of the current Trudeau government to get anything done on the nuts and bolts level with regard to public policy. Is it unique, though, just to them, to be, to be fair, Christy, to the government? I mean, the climate policy in a resource-based country is never going to be easy. They also came to office, you know, based on... Uh, sort of being able to resonate with the constituency of voters in which climate policy was very important and now to John's point maybe isn't quite as important because of the affordability crisis. Like, is it is it just unique to them or is it going to be difficult for any government to square this circle given the, the basis of our economy? I don't think it is that difficult because in Canada we produce vast amounts of ethically produced uh, green natural, well, as green as the world can make it, natural gas, which offsets massively coal um, around the world. So I don't actually think it's that hard. The idea that you're going to try and suppress economic growth as a way to support the environment, I think is what really bothers people. And I, you know, I, I don't think, I mean, I know that carbon taxes are unpopular with people all the time, but the way the government is using the carbon tax in Canada is they're saying, government's going to take all the money and they're going to hire more bureaucrats and make government bigger. What they should be doing is if there's going to be a carbon price, put that money back into the economy by lowering other people's, ta people's taxes, individuals' taxes and small business taxes, then you can address the affordability crisis at the same time that you're meeting your environmental goals. Yeah, or Vashi, the government, what Tom said, you know, which yeah, is... Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean... Yeah, go ahead. You know, give, give them, I mean, I think part of the other problem is that people pay this tax and they pay it, every, they be reminded they pay it every time they go to the gas pump or the grocery store or a host of other places, but they don't see anything as to what's happening with it. And I think that when Tom mentioned, I think very correctly, that one of the first things they've done very right today was to say, we're going to give you, I think it's $10,000 towards the cost of a, um, a heat pump. And that is, that doesn't even take account of the fact a lot of people won't be able to afford to take advantage of that. But nonetheless, it at least says there's some of your money coming back to help you do something yourself that is actually going to first reduce greenhouse gases in the short term and second probably save them money down the road but right now people have nothing to show for it except these checks that come four times a year where you sort of forget about those when you're going to the gas station you know several times a week if you have commuting which in Atlantic Canada and other parts of the country people have long commutes and fill up often I have just 30 seconds but it's sort of that that, that really interests me Tom why I mean they are getting money back Canadians are getting money back in the form of those rebates but for whatever reason it has not won them any won the government any political favor why no. do you think that is No because people concentrate on the tax a cap and trade system that by the way Canada was a precursor in when we brought it in to deal with acid rain it was Mulroney and Bush who came up with a plan and it actually worked that's something where you can determine you will have a result a carbon tax 
is a tax. And you can wish that it's going to have a result. There are cases where you can prove that it has had a result. BC is a, is a case in point. But you can't guarantee it with everything else that we're doing in Canada. So it's been smoke and mirrors, mostly smoke, because again, as I mentioned, we've got a lousy, uh, really lousy record on this under this government. So they're good at talking about it. They're good at positioning and preening and posturing, but they're not getting the job done. When Mr. Trudeau came back from that Paris meeting, he didn't mention it there, but the first thing he did was saying, okay, here's my plan. And it was Stephen Harper's plan. It was Stephen Harper's timelines and Stephen Harper's targets, the ones that he had denigrated during the campaign. And you know what? Even that, he didn't get it done. So people who follow these issues closely, who care a lot about climate change and want us to be doing our share to fight it, realize that we're, we're getting a pig in a poke. And that's why people are going to be pushing back on this. For Trudeau, it's a lose-lose because people in Atlantic Canada are not going to be fooled by the three years. They're going to say, it's coming, so we've got to be careful. And people who care about these issues, mostly in urban centres, are saying, we're not getting it done with this government.